greetings. I'm going to introduce you to the most important part of Java. Um, Java is what they call an object-oriented language, which means that the way you organize programs is you organize them using things called objects. Um, and you don't really know about objects yet. So uh, this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own objects. Uh, this short program here is the program that we're going to be making. Um, I've added some comments so that you can sort of see what I have in mind. So just like you can create a variable that holds an integer like this, if we had something that would let us create dog objects, dog could be a data type. So this variable d would hold a dog object, and the way we'd make it is like this. We'd say create a new dog, and we'd give the dog some facts, like its name is Frangipani, and we would give it like a happiness level and a food level. And now this variable d is holding the dog, and just like with turtles before, we could tell the dog to do things. So we could tell the dog object to display what its current happiness and food level is. And then we could tell the dog to run, and it would run. And then we'll have it display again what's its happiness and food level. And then we could tell the dog to speak, and we could feed the dog. And this three would be like how much are we trying to feed it. So that's the idea of an object. An object is a single thing that has some variables, for example, happiness and food level and it's got some behaviors, so it's got some methods, so it can display its own state, or it could run, or it could speak. Um, objects are just used all the time. Like, you might think you know about Java, but you don't really know about it yet, because you don't know about objects. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, if you haven't typed this, why don't you go ahead and type this, because I'm going to show you step by step how you can create a class that defines a dog object, and then have it be able to do each of these things step by step. So here I am, I've got my main. Why don't we say new class and we'll create a class called dog. So here's something that's important. You have to name your class the same thing that you want your objects to be named. So I want my objects to be named dog. So I'm going to call my class dog. The other thing is it's, it's conventional to start with an uppercase letter. And we don't want a main method because this is not a program that's going to run. Instead, this is like a blueprint for what does it mean to be a dog object. All right, so I'll click Finish, and I've got dog. I want you to do one last thing, which is grab this tab up here and pull it to the right, so that way we can look at our main and our dog side by side. I'm going to go ahead and close the Package Explorer. When you're creating a new object, there are kind of three things you want to think about. The first thing you want to think about are what variables do you want your object to have? So what facts describe your object? Um, and so if you don't have a clear picture in your head of what you want the object to be able to do, it's going to be really hard to answer this. Um, here, I think that the dog should have a name, I think it should have a happiness level, and I think it should have a food level. So I'm going to go ahead and create some variables. I'll say string name, and I'll say I'm going to make the food level and happiness level integers. So food level and then happiness level. So that's the way you start. You start by giving your object some variables. OK, the next thing you need to be able to do is you need to actually be able to create a new dog object. And that's what this does. When it says new dog, this is called a constructor because it constructs the dog. So this is sort of like a method. So let's go ahead and write the constructor. Um, it starts the, way that, the same way that you write other methods. So it'll say public and then Ordinarily, you would have like void dog, and then you'd have your inputs here. So string name, int food level, int happiness. <laughs> so this is a little bit wrong. Um, the constructor is a special method because it's the one that will make new dogs. So one of the ways the computer knows that the constructor is this special method, there's actually a couple ways. One way is it's named the exact same thing as the class. So if I'm making a dog object up here, my constructor has to be called dog. The other way is it doesn't have any return value, not even void. So you just leave that completely blank. Other than that, it's exactly like any other method. All right, so here it looks like I'm trying to give my dog constructor three inputs. Um, and so that's why I've created three variables right here. Frangipani gets assigned to n, 100 gets assigned to f, and 100 gets assigned to h. Okay, so here's the thing. These three variables, n, f, and h, 
These only exist for as long as this constructor is running, and then once the dog's constructed, these variables go away. So one of the main points of the constructor, what it means to construct a dog object, is you want to give values to the dog variables up here. Name, food level, happiness level. These are your object variables. And so in order to create your object, you have to give these variables values. So here's what we'll do. We'll say this.name equals n. And what that does is it takes Frangipani, which got assigned to n, and now I take that n and I assign it to this.name. And the keyword this refers to the current dog object. So I'm saying this dog, take its name variable and save n in there. This.foodLevel equals f, this.happinessLevel equals h. Okay, so quick note, you don't actually have to type this dot. If I typed name, that would work just fine. Um, there's two reasons why you probably want to type this dot. The first is so that you remember that this variable is one of your object variables instead of just some temporary variable in a particular command. Um, the second reason is, what if I had called this name? So now I've got a problem because I want to say something like this. Frangipani gets assigned to name. That happens automatically because that's how uh, methods get their inputs. And now I want to say, take this name right here and save it into this name variable up here. The problem is they're both called name. So when I say name equals name, the computer doesn't know like which one of these name variables am I trying to talk about, like which one gets saved into which. So when you say this, that makes it unambiguous. It disambiguates the names. So now it's very clear. See how this one is sort of in a brown color and this one's in a blue color? So the input variable name is now getting assigned to this object's name variable. So long story short, I think it's a great idea to just type this dot all the time whenever you're using your object variables. All right, so that's done it. That's the constructor. So every single time I run new dog, it will run this command, and it'll take whatever these inputs are and save them as my new dog variables. All right, so let's give this dog some behaviors. Let's do dis display state and run. So whenever you want to give your dog object a new command that it can run, you give it a new method inside the dog class. So if I wanted to be able to say d dot, oops, d dot play dead, that would mean I'd create a play dead method inside dog here. Okay, let's not do that yet though. So uh, the name of the command I want this d variable to run is display state. So public void display state. And I just want to double check my inputs and outputs. So it looks like display state does not take any inputs. So here I don't need to create any variables. Display state is just supposed to display something. So there is no return value. Um, yeah, it's going to display something to the console, but it's not going to give an answer back to main over here. So void is a great return type. All right, so what do I want to do when I run display state? I want it to display uh, the name, and then I want it to display the stats. So this is going to display like Frangipani has food level food and happiness level happiness. So you can have this say whatever you want it to say, um, but the idea is this should just display what are the values of your dog variables right now. Okay, let's make the run command. So public void run. And again, it doesn't take any inputs. It's not going to give any outputs because the whole point of the run command is it's going to make Fido run. Not Fido. What's his name? Brunchapani. So if you want to, you could have it display something like running. Um, but then I got to think about what's the main thing that running is going to do to my dog? How does it affect the dog? So I think it's going to make the, f the dog's food level go down because it's getting, whoops, because it's using up energy when it runs. So I'm going to say food level equals food level minus one. 
or let's let's subtract more. Let's subtract five. So when the dog runs, its food level variable goes down by a little bit. OK, let's go ahead and run what we have so far. So I don't have a speak method, so I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to comment this out. I'll comment this out. I'll comment this out. So, so far, this should create a new dog. It's going to display its state. It's going to run, and it's going to display its state again. And what I'm looking for is I want to see when it runs, does its food level actually go down? So here I run it, and it says, Frangipani has 100 food and 100 happiness. And then it says running. So that must be happening when this run command runs. And then it displays its state again, and it says Frangipani has 95 food and 100 happiness. OK, well, I think I'm going to make this display state a print line statement, because I think it's weird that this running is on the same line as the previous command. So let's run it again. OK, that's a little bit better. So the big picture that I want you to have in your head is the dog class over here is a blueprint for what does it mean to be a dog. And what that means is it's got some variables and it's got some behaviors. And this dog class does not run. You can't run this blueprint itself. Instead, you have a different like tester class over here where you actually run the constructor to make a dog object, and then you tell your dog object to do stuff. And so over here, whenever you run a method, it jumps over to the blueprint, and it runs the command inside the blueprint, and then it jumps back. That's the idea. OK, let's do one more thing before I'll let you write the speak command and the feed command. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that using this blueprint, you can create as many dog objects as you want. So let's create another dog object. I'll say dog E equals new dog. This one will be called Fido. And it will have 50 and 50. And so if I want to, I could say E dot display state. And then I'll say E dot run and then e dot run. I'm going to make Fido run a lot. OK, so what's happening is Frangipani and Fido both display their states. And then Fido runs a lot, and Frangipani runs a little bit. And then at the very end, we'll have each dog display their state. Oops. OK, let's run it. So we've got Frangipani has 100 food and 100 happiness. Fido has that. Then there's a lot of running that happens. And I'm thinking maybe the dog should say its own name when it's running, so that way we know which dog is running. And then it says Frangipani has 95 food, Fido has 35 food and 50 happiness. OK, um, let's make that one more change in running. So let's see, inside here, I want to say like the dog's name and then running. So up here at the top, I see name is the dog name. So now, whenever a dog runs, it will say its own name and then is running. So now if I run it again, cool. Fido is running, Frangipani is running. All right, so that's the basics of how you make an object. Um, good vocabulary to know. These variables up here that describe your object are sometimes called instance variables. They're sometimes called fields. This is a constructor, and the job of the constructor is to create a new object. But what that means usually is to give values to your object variables. And then these are methods, which are the behaviors of your object.